Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidier houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. This mess is getting out of hand. What will the landlady think? Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. I don't see the Strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the Strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. The dustbin is yours for the digging, Mr. Holmes. Don't look at me. If you want the newspaper, you'll have to get your hands dirty. If you come across one of my drafts, please leave it in the bin. If I am honest, part of me will enjoy watching you rifle through rubbish. Seems only fair after what you did to our flat. 
If I'm honest, part of me will enjoy watching you rifle through rubbish. Seems only fair after what you did to our flat. Hmm, what does it say? Cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Do you even have enemies that Get would the strand. want to kill you? Get your copy okay, of the strand here. From Cordona. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. 
Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Isn't that Mr. Holmes' murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but Get he also strand. has his screws. Get your copy of the strand Not here. every pawn knows it's part of a game. Do you know anything about this? No, sir. I've never heard of it. Do you know anything about this? Sorry, sir. I can't help you. Could you help me? I wish I could help, but I know nothing. How about that Vogel fellow? He seems rather obsessed with you. Would he do something like this? Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. 
Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. Really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it a pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. <laughs> so, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? But I can't hear you. Please come back later. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. We're looking for a cactus needle in a haystack. Hmm. A spine in a bookstack. No, come on, Watson. Think. Language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. It's the finest view London has to offer.
Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses? Our national emblem. God save the Queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. 
But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. I should have worn something warmer. Didn't you once tell me that answers usually lie in plain sight? I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package. Heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, OK. Just give me the paper.
Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. Tell you what. Tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. Okay, okay. Not just tomorrow. A whole week's worth. How does that sound? You're right. I could do more. Next time you move out, I'll be there to help. I'm great with boxes. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Not much further now. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the Inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimahia breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> You heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. May I see your servant's bedroom? His shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. I take it this is the first time Kimahir has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Did Kimahir make off with anything of value? Heavens, no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. Tell me about Kimi here. His foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. 
Biggest man you've ever seen, and as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English, never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. Why are you still here? This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. The rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Clothes made of hessian. Is Sten really so miserly? A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone? No air coming through it. Is this a Tanifa, a Maori water spirit, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. Button chops, the remains of a meal. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. The ashes are long since cold. Scrap of Hessian. These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them.
no air coming through it. Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. Small Navy spyglass. Clothes made of Hessian. Is Stenwick really so miserly? This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. I think Kimmy here had an accomplice in his escape. Is this a tanny farm, a Maori water spirit, or something else? No air coming through it. No air coming through it.
impartial, but he's one of my few clients. Please, try to remain courteous. Looks like a knee print. Chewing tobacco. A shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. Shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. This disappearance is intriguing, no? I cannot make head nor tail of it. Are you joking? Why would I know this? I thought you were meant to be intelligent. Do you happen to know Kimihir's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. Has Kimahir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimahir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it... distracting. Are you joking? Why would I know this? The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimi here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. If you find my man, I have a marvelous whiskey with your name on it.
rag reeks of smoke. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. have left these tracks. They seem fresh.
This disappearance is intriguing, though. I cannot make head nor tail of it. This disappearance is intriguing, though. I cannot make head nor tail of it. Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone? You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimahir, likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimahir never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. I found the residue of narcotics in Kimahir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimahir was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. Truly, there is no better evidence of a man's nature than the way he treats those who help him. And you, sir, are a brute. The cruelty of your ignorance about the Maori people, your selfish attitude to a man's kidnapping. Uh, the point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity.
Yes, Stenwick is no angel, but he's one of my few clients. Please, try to remain courteous. say wheels picked up grass along the way Kimahir's cart I gather Roy Soulsby could that be the name of our man A strange substance. I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to hazard a guess, Doctor? Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say saltpeter. Then we're in agreement. Well done. Sturdy rope, professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair. Large pile of horse droppings. Many cigarette butts. Someone stood here for hours. There was a cab waiting here. Our abductor slipped in and then off into the night. Strand proved not so useless after all. The saltpeter accident, Doctor, do you recall? The Port of London, of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed, we shall need to take a cab there. Where to, Gav? 
The Port of London, please. I will show you where to stop. Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Uh, one kidnapping does not a story make. Stop! A black cat crossed before us. It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps. Before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor. After that... Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. Dehydration set in. And things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. To whom I'm grateful. Without their diligence, you would not be standing here and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes. But I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimahir? here?